morning. Um, it's great to see you all this morning. Uh, this morning, this week, all this week, we're thinking about connecting. And last couple of days, we've essentially been mostly thinking about connecting with God. And today we're thinking uh, a bit more about connecting with one another, that we are a community as God's people. We are a community of faith where we are connected into one another. The image of the vine and the branches that Fran talked about yesterday had some of that in it, it too. But to be connected to each other brings into kind of focus uh, our relationships. And obviously we know that our relationships can be places of great life and flourishing, but also there's a huge fragility to them too. I was struck a couple of weeks ago when I was looking through some Bible verses, uh, a verse in Proverbs, um, the heartfelt counsel of a friend is as sweet as perfume and incense. And actually, when we've had great friends, we've had people who are like that to us, we realise how precious it is when we find people to connect with. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read the morning Bible passage, which is from Hebrews 10, verses 23 to 25, as we think a little bit more about how we can spur each other on and encourage each other in our relationships with one another this morning. Let me pray. God of grace, would you grow us in grace? Would we grow in grace? At the same time, grow in truth too. For your name and for your glory, would you strengthen our relationships? In Jesus' name. Amen. So our reading um, is Hebrews 10, verses 23 to 25. Let's the hold unswervingly to the hope we professed. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Fran's now going to share some things from our passage. And then after she's shared, we're going to do a couple of practical things, which is slightly different this morning. There are numerous ways in which organisations, charities, business and individuals are encouraging people to stay connected in lockdown. The BBC gives tips to parents as to how to encourage their children to safely connect while playing computer games or spending time on social media. Mental health charities are giving advice about the simple and positive effect of a daily text to a friend. And there are many, many more. The writer of Hebrews in this passage is writing to Christians facing persecution to encourage them to persevere in their faith and to give them some great tips on staying connected and standing together as disciples of Christ, whatever they face. These verses give us four lettuces that can encourage us in these days of lockdown when we can't physically be together and yet want to stay connected as God's people and God's church at St Swithin's. Firstly, let's hold on to hope. Many have felt pretty hopeless during these last few weeks. They can't go out, they don't know what's going on, and they're feeling alone and wondering what the future will look like. But Christians have an eternal hope to hold on to. We have permanent access to God through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are not alone and he is with us and he is always faithful. We're not hopeless because one day all pain, struggle and despair will end and we will be with him for eternity. And we can encourage each other with that hope. Secondly, let us spur one another another on towards love and good deeds. Just because we're at home doesn't mean we can't encourage each other, spur one another on to act out of love towards others. The temptation might be to bed down and just focus on ourselves and getting through the weeks ahead. But perhaps instead we can spur each other on to be outward looking, to take an active approach to caring for those around us, 
to encourage each other to live out our faith and to be a witness for Christ. Thirdly, let's not give up meeting together. Well, this is clearly very tricky, and especially as we cannot physically be together. But the writer here is concerned that the people might desert or abandon their faith and walk away from God. We need to be careful during this time that because we don't have the discipline of a Sunday morning, that we don't drift away from our relationship with God and with each other. We can't help the fact the law tells us that we can't meet in our church building, but we can remain committed to worship and making the most of our as one at 10 resources that encourage us to grow deeper with God and know him better. Let's not get lazy as lockdown continues. Meeting to worship, to pray, to learn from God's word are essential if we're going to persevere during this time and then return to being all together Sunday by Sunday in future. And lastly, let's just encourage each other. Perhaps as the week's gone on, you found it harder and harder to keep up the intention of encouraging each other and encouraging your friends and your neighbours. But let's not stop, because we can phone and text and send cards, and now we can even have one-to-one walks. Words of encouragement are so incredibly powerful. A simple keep going, or I'm praying for you, or I miss you, goes a very, very long way in times like this in whatever form it comes. When we commit to these four things, these four lettuces, we are bringing God glory and honor. We're demonstrating our love for him and we're demonstrating our love and our commitment to one another. So since with this church, let's not stop. Let's keep going. Amen. Okay. Well, um, One of the uh, things we're going to do, we're just going to take a moment to be quiet. And I don't know what kind of screen you've got in front of you, but I'm going to suggest we do two practical things this morning. One of which we're going to uh, have maybe a minute and a half, two minutes quiet. And I'd like you to look at the screen in front of you and see the different faces and to pray for the people, just to quietly pray Uh, and to encourage the people who are on your screens this morning. They may be literally around you on the screen, or they may be nearby, or may have remembered who's actually in the meeting at the beginning. But just to take a minute and a half of silence, and in that silence to pray God's blessing and encouragement on the people on the screen. So let's pray.
Amen. Let's uh, bring our prayers to a close. Thank you for the, for the prayers this morning. But I'm also going to encourage you to do one other thing. I worked with um, a youth worker who was brilliant at doing this. And I, I um, and one of the things he often used to say is this. He said, I'd actually all like us, if possible, if you've got your mobile phone anywhere near you. If you don't, don't worry. But I'd like you to think about, think of three Christians this morning that you could encourage by sending a text to. Now, if you haven't got a phone with you, you can maybe send something. And then literally, as you're sat here this morning, if you've got your phone with you this morning, just do one of them this morning, uh, but then commit to encourage three specific people by sending, you may just want to say, I'm praying for you. You may want to send a scripture. You may just say, keep going. You know, you may want to be more personal than that. And actually just send a word of encouragement literally as we said. So I'm going to take one minute and then we'll finish. So if you want to write a text, pick somebody this morning. And send a text. Great, I hope you're getting on texting, okay? I won't um, keep you longer than we said, but hopefully you'll be able to send one. But can I encourage you, if you do have a phone, to find the other two people and take time to just send a simple word of encouragement to somebody uh, today. So thank you. Let me just finish by praying. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>